So yeah, yeah we also wanted to do an extra special thing this week for the developer of this yes, game. Yes, we did. We started like uh, want to give some more shout outs to uh, the directors and makers of the games we love. So we uh, looked into the Oracle games and Hidemaro Fujibayashi. Fujibayashi, the director. And you might be familiar with the name. Fujibayashi Sun has actually become a very important figure in the Zelda game series. But to go into more detail about his history, he started out actually, and believe it or not, this is 100% true, he was a haunted house like production designer in, in, in Japan. So he would literally like haunted attractions, like you know, like you go like like the ones you go into at Halloween. He was the one who like helped make those sets and all that stuff, which is amazing. First off, I love that. Especially Japanese haunted I want to see those. They're probably dope. Oh dude, Japanese. I wonder if those are around to witness the Fujibayashi haunted rides. He did that. He actually saw, I believe in the magazine in a magazine or a newspaper, an advertisement for a game company that was hiring and he was enthralled by the idea that you had to submit examples of your work to get into this he loved he just loved the idea that like people cared about your work i mean i could i could imagine too if you're in that environment like working for a haunted house like they maybe don't value your work you know so i that's more he's probably an artist who puts himself into it exactly and And wants that appreciation exactly and i mean that that part's a little bit more us speculating but i can imagine that's 100 percent true um so he did this and and the game company was we don't know if, if for a fact that was Capcom or not, but okay. later, the, the article I read on Wikipedia, at least, it, it was a cited article, um, didn't go into exact details about whether or not that was his position at Capcom, but later on, he did end up at Capcom. He developed a couple little PlayStation games. Uh, one of them, I, I believe, was a Sudoku game, which I feel like almost every Japanese developer starts off making a, a Sudoku yeah, game at some point. Just simple like puzzle games for Japan, PlayStation. He worked on... Magical Tetris Challenge is that is that the American name of it? Uh, that is yeah, and that's basically Mickey's Tetris. Yeah, it's weird because I, I thought in America it was called Mickey's Tetris for the longest time, but it's not actually. And that was N sixty four, right? That was an N sixty four game. So yes. he made that for N sixty four through Capcom, and that was like his first real game. Yes, and obviously that game was a Capcom game that was published by Nintendo. Capcom and Nintendo had a little bit of a working relationship in the late nineties. Uh, like like Capcom would 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 make some games for the for the N sixty four and later the Game Boy Color that uh nintendo would publish and the oracle games are actually that uh fun fact i I feel like a lot of people now in like this in like our generation and maybe even younger don't know that but oracles of ages and oracle seasons as well as the minish cap which is my first zelda game and always one of my favorites were actually all developed by capcom and more specifically they were directed um and the scenario was written and they were coordinated by fubiyashi san Fujibayashi-san. Fujibayashi yeah Fujibayashi my apologies um and also just to go down the list he did four swords before Minish Cap and after the Oracles. That's right. And he was the full director of Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild. Yes, and that's what we're getting at here. This guy has basically become a Numasan. I believe we talked about this a bit in the past. Has stepped back from his directorial duties and become more of a producer slash overseer. Ironically, he's kind of taken the position that Miyamoto took post Ocarina um, when when a Numasan took over as director. Post Twilight Princess, he basically decided at some point during Skyward Sword's development that he wanted to take more of a supervisory role. He brought Fujibayashi on, but Fujibayashi um, was actually brought on before that. So he did Minish Cap, and like and like uh, Ben said, Four Swords Adventures. Sometime along that along that part, uh, Nintendo, who hadn't self de- self developed a a, a, a Zelda uh, portable game since Link's Awakening DX. No, I'm sorry. Link's Awakening DX was a, was the remake, correct? It's just no, Link's. but you're right. Um, but since Link's Awakening, they hadn't done one. And actually, this is even something that uh, Miyamoto has talked about. Link's Awakening being developed for the Game Boy is one of the reasons that it took so long for Ocarina to get out. So there was kind of because there was only really one team working on Zelda for a while. So post and that's that's why they started to outsource the handhelds to Capcom. Exactly. Yes, which is how Capcom came into making Zelda games. So. Post uh, Minish Cap, I think there and the beginning of the DS era, there's there was this desire to do internally developed Zelda games again, and Anuma kind of wanted to create a second team, so they couldn't uh, they wouldn't take assets away from at the time. I believe they were developing Twilight Princess, so he didn't want to take assets away from Twilight Princess. So Fujibayashi came on, the, uh, co-directed Phantom Hourglass, and then after that. Um, he, I mean, he'd been developing Zelda games at this point for 
over a decade. He was a trusted guy. He was someone who Nintendo literally took from Capcom, brought in to work at Nintendo for Phantom Hourglass. So Anuma picked him to be his his uh, successor to development. He did Skyward Sword, which, as we know, has been it's divisive. It's a divisive. Course, it's a divisive. But it gets high praise from me and from you. I, I still haven't played it, so I, I can't say, but I got to <laughs> right. get on that. Um, but if, if and nothing... I, I got to say, like, those, this list is like some of my favorite ones in the series. You were saying... Skyward that... Breath, Minish Cap, and Oracle Seasons. Yeah. I are know some you... of my top ones. Yeah, I know. You were saying before we started that, like, I you didn't realize it, but this guy's, like, secretly your jam. Like Secretly my jam, yeah. So that's also why we want to give more praise to the developers. Absolutely. Because people should know who their jam is. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason, too, why, just to take a second and look forward, we, me and Ben really like the idea of doing this as a recurring segment or just a recurring part of the segments, because there's a lot of great individual developers as well as teams out there that I don't think get enough credits. I mean, there's titans like Miyamoto or Kojima-san, and they're amazing people that deserve a lot of credit, but Fujibayashi is so integral to this new era of Zelda. And, and think about it, I mean, say what you want about Skyward Sword... Um, but that game and Breath of the Wild are two radically different Zelda games yeah. from what we've been getting. And that speaks to the innovation that this man has brought to the table. And even now with Breath, I mean, he gave us Breath of the Wild. And, you know, Anuma-san in a lot of ways was the one who who wanted to go back to a more traditional type of Zelda. He wanted to do something different. But Fujibayashi-san is the one who on a day-to-day level executed that. He's the one who directed the game. And he's the one who kind of came up with all the elements to the scenario that led to the game we have. He made it happen. Exactly. And he absolutely deserves so much credit. Now, that said, he's actually gotten a decent amount, uh, or at least more so than I, I think we normally see from Nintendo, which does tend to, as we've talked about in the past, and I'm not saying this to pass judgment good or bad, but Nintendo does have this kind of reputation for focusing on it on its more senior development team, and, and, and uh, the, the, the younger staff tends to have to work their way up to the ranks to a more lead role where they get recognition. And even within Fujibayashi's career, you can see that he started off working on the handheld games, which for the record, I don't, I don't think is a slight. Cause again, those handheld games are fantastic. Yeah. But, he definitely proved himself, but also being a part of Capcom to begin with, they, they definitely tread lightly in terms of, uh, giving their franchises away and trusting people like that. So he, he made his way up the ranks. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think he proved why with, with, uh, a palm, I mean, he's made, fantastic zelda game after there's not really a bad game in that list you know definitely not like all those games are fantastic i know some people think phantom hour i guess people don't like spirit tracks as much right people like phantom hourglass more people like phantom hourglass um but also that that was only like partially directed by him like you said and yeah uh, that that one he had probably the least i think four swords uh is not praised as much it's not a bad game but it's just uh it's multiplayer and it's not your you know amazing full stop Zelda entry in the series. But yeah, even Skyward and Breath alone. Yeah. There you go. I mean, he's taking chances. He's experimenting with one of the core pillar franchises of Zelda. And that, that is amazing. I, I think he deserves so much credit. Um, what I was going to say though, if you want to learn more about this guy, guys, we've already talked about this. And if you guys already know him, good on you, but he was heavily involved in the GDC talk that Nintendo released on their official channel for Breath of the Wild, and he also prominently features in the making of Breath of the Wild documentary. So watch both of those. I believe he's on Twitter. He's he's online. Give him a shout-out. This guy, Fujibayashi-san, thank you so much for taking one of my favorite series and always trying to do new things with it. I mean, even Minish Cap is an amazing game that, again, that was my game that got me into Zelda. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's such an interesting experimental game. Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, those are such cool games. Thank you for doing what you're doing, and we love you. There's a bee. <laughs> <laughs>